This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, we're still talking about the management of receivables. And in the uh, previous lecture, uh, we went through what I call a simple settlement discount, which um, I hope made sense. It was pretty straightforward. Uh, however, where it gets a little bit more interesting and a little bit more work needed uh, is what I call a change of policy, where we need a slightly different approach. And let me explain what I mean with the example. Look at example two. Uh, a company has sales of 20 million per year. Uh, customers currently take credit as follows. Um, some pay after 30 days. It says 20% pay after 30 days. 50% pay after 60 days, 30% they take 90 days. Uh, the company is considering offering a discount of 1% for payment within 30 days. And it's estimated that 60% of customers will take advantage of the discount. And so in the future, 60% are going to pay in 30 days. Uh, the remainder uh, will take a full 90 days. Uh, the company's bank overdraft rate is 15% per year. Uh, and it says calculate the net cost or benefit of this change in policy. Uh, and as a result, should we offer the discount or not? Now here we do need a different approach because not everybody's going to get the discount. Uh, uh, there are two problems here. One is that at the moment, some are taking 30, some taking 60, some taking 90. And in addition, if they offer the discount, well, only some of them will take it. 60% will pay in 30 days and get the discount. The rest of them won't. <coughs> and so we, we need a different approach. Uh, and the only approach, effectively, we're told what to do here. Uh, we need to look over a year. Over a year, what costs will be involved? That's fairly obvious. The, we'll be giving a discount. That will cost money. Uh, what benefits will there be? And of course the benefit, uh, a lot of people are going to pay sooner, which will save us interest. And then look at overall, over the year, is there a net saving, a net benefit or a net cost? And then, as you'll see, the decision I think will be obvious. Now how you set out your workings is entirely up to you, as long as obviously, if it's in section C, that it's clear to the examiner or the marker, uh, what I always do is set up side by side what costs are going to be involved. Cost per annum, and certainly this is example two. Uh, what costs uh, will there be per year? Uh, what savings or benefits will there be? And then, as I said, we can look at the net cost or saving and make the decision. Well, let's have a look. What costs are there? Uh, the cost is going to be the discount. At the moment, uh, uh, we're getting full payment uh, for our sales of 20 million. Uh, in future, some of them will get us a discount. It'll cost us money. So how much is it going to be? The discount is 1%. Uh, uh, how many customers get the discount? Well, 60% get the discount. 60% uh, over the year of sales of 20 million. So on 60% of our sales, We'll get that. They have to lose that one percent. So sixty percent of uh, twenty million, uh, twelve million, one percent. It's a hundred and twenty thousand. So that's the cost to us over the year of giving the discount. Now the benefit is that because overall we're going to receive uh, money from customers sooner. Uh, will save overdraft interest at 15%. So I'll need, well, the benefit is going to be the interest saving. Uh, and I do need little workings for this. Um, at the moment, customers are taking credit as follows. Well, let's work out at the moment, currently, uh, what are the average receivables? So I'm going to look first of all at the current receivables. Uh, 
Uh, and I think the best, the easiest, the most obvious way of doing it is let's calculate, first of all, on average, how long are they taking to pay? Well, it's either 30, 60, or 90 days. Uh, the percentage is 20%, 50%, 30%, 60%. And so the average uh, collection period will take a weighted average. 20% uh, of 30 is 6. 50% of 60 is 30. 30% 30 of 90 is 27. And so on average, it's taking 63 days. There is the average collection period. Well, if on average they're taking 63 days to pay, what are the average receivables going to be? Uh, he says assume 365 days in a year. So if you're selling 20 million a year, uh, on average, uh, divide by 365, it's that much per day. 63 days on average is how long it's we be how much we're being owed. So it's 63 divided by 365 times 20 million, which on average is how much? 63 divided by 365 times 20 million. Uh, 3 million 452,000, 055. So on average throughout the year, at the moment, we've got receivables of 3.4 million. Let's work out what the new receivables will be. Uh, and what's going to happen in the future? Uh, in the future, 60% will take advantage of the discount. So 60% will pay in 30 days. Uh, the remainder will take a full 90. So if 60% are paying in 30 days, the remaining 40% will be taking 90 days. Um, so the average collection period, 60% of 30 is 18, 40% of 90 is 36. On average, it'll fall to 54 days. And therefore, what will be the average receivables under the new policy? Uh, same logic as before. Uh, 54 days, 365 in a year. And incidentally, do check. Quite often the examiner says assume 360 days in a year. Uh, so don't make a silly mistake. About 54, 360 fifths of 20 million. The new receivables... On average, they fall to 2958904. Uh, now, uh, some of you may have a, a little query there. You see, I've taken it at 20 million. <coughs> In fact, of course, we won't actually receive 20 million because of that discount. And so, uh, what you can do, it's arguable to be honest. You could say, well, since the discount is 120,000, perhaps we should take 54, 365, uh, 20 million less 120,000. Well, it's up to you. Uh, sometimes the examiner subtracts the discount, sometimes he doesn't. But he has said you'll get full marks either way, because it is arguable. Uh, and in fact, the difference is, it, when we finished, is going to be very tiny anyway. However, as a result of offering the discount, there's a fall in the receivables. At the moment, on average, the 3.45 million throughout the year. In future, 2.958 million. And so the fall, 3.452055. 
uh, minus 2958904493151. And so throughout the year, on average 3.4 million, falling to on average 2.9 million. So throughout the year, receivables are 493,000 lower. And as a result, we can reduce our overdraft by 493,000 and save interest at whatever rate it is, 15%. So now I can go back to my initial table, 493,151. Remember, it's the fall in the receivables throughout the year. As a result, we'll save the overdraft interest 15% per year. And so the saving... 493151, 15%, uh, 73973. And now the decision's obvious. Uh, compare the two. Here, there's a net cost. If the difference is costing 120,000 to give the discount, we're saving 73,973 interest. So a net cost of 46,027. And because it's a net cost, it's not worth giving the discount. And there we are. Had there been a net saving, of course, it, uh, we should give the discount. Uh, but here it's not worthwhile. Uh, so, I don't know, it's not a difficult exercise. The one learning bit, the one bit to make sure you're clear about, uh, is calculating the falling receivables and therefore the interest saving. But once you've got the hang of that, um, it's not difficult, it's, it's just reading the question carefully. Uh, there's a second example there, example three. Exactly the same idea, except this time we're thinking of employing a factor. Have a look at example three with me. Uh, our sales are 10 million a year and cu customers currently pay as follows. Uh, this time it's in months. If it's in days, work in days. If it's in months, work in months. Uh, but 20% pay in a month, 30% in two months, 50% in three months. Uh, this time, as I said, instead of uh, thinking about giving a discount, we're considering whether or not to factor our debts. The factor will pay us 100% of debts after one month. So the factor effectively becomes the debtor. Uh, so instead of waiting one, two, three months, we're getting everything in one month. Uh, they charge 2% of turnover. And as a result of employing a factor, we'll be able to lose some credit control staff. We'll need fewer credit control people ourselves, and that will save us 20,000 a year. The overdraft rate is 18% a year. Well, exactly the same approach as before. We're going to look at the costs per annum, the savings or benefits per annum. And again, net saving is worthwhile, net cost it isn't. Well, certainly if it's section C, get the easy marks first. Remember, each bit of workings attracts marks separately. Uh, and there are two very obvious costs straight away, or oh, two very obvious figures, sorry. Uh, first of all, the cost of the factor. Uh, the factor's fee is 2% of turnover uh, the turnover, 10 million. So the cost per year, I should be able to do in my head, but I always get my decimal places wrong. 2% of 10 million is 200,000. Uh, what else? Um, it also says that we'll be able to save money by having fewer credit control staff. And so there's a saving straight off there, of 20,000 a year, uh, fewer staff. However, the bit that always takes that little bit longer, 
uh, is of course the interest saving. Because I think clearly, since at the moment they're taking one, two or three months, but in future, effectively of getting them in, in just one month, and as I said before, the factor becomes the receivable, our receivables are lower, and like in the previous example, we'll save interest. Uh, and so the interest saving. Let me again do the little workings. What are the current average receivables? Well, again, I'll do the collection period first. And as I did say a few seconds ago, if the question's given in days, like example two, use days. If it's given in months, use months. So currently, it's one month, two months, three months, 20%, 30%, 50%. And so the average collection period, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 1.5. Uh, <laughs> an average period of 2.3 months. And therefore, what are the average receivables? The 12 months in a year. So uh, the period of 2.3 months is 2.3 divided by 12 times the sales over the year of 10 million. Which gives me average receivables 2.3 divided by 12 times 10. Uh, one nine one six 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 seven. I could have chosen nicer figures. Uh, what are the new average receivables going to be? Uh, well, as I've said twice, I think uh, because the factor pays us hundred percent after one month, the factor effectively is a receivable, and the new average receivables. Uh, one month collection period, 12 months in a year. No mention of the total sales changing, so still 10 million, which gives me average receivables of 833333. And so again, throughout the year, receivables fall from a current average of 1.9 million to a current point eight, a uh, new point eight million. The fall throughout the year, the difference 1916667 minus 833333, 1083334. Now I can go back and finish the tables. The interest saved. One zero eight three 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 four. Uh, the interest was what the bank overdraft rate this time is eighteen percent, and so the saving, the interest saving, one hundred and ninety five thousand. And now we've got it. The cost per year two hundred. The saving per year in total 215. So this time there's a net saving of the difference of what, 15,000. And because there's a net saving, uh, we will employ the factor. And there we are. Um, so as I said before, the only, apart from obviously reading the question carefully, uh, the only technique bit of it to make sure of is making sure you are happy with the idea and the workings uh, for calculating this interest saving. Um, otherwise, I, I don't think it's too bad. But there we are for managing receivables. Um, 
Certainly in sections A or B, it could well be a simple settlement discount, as in the previous lecture, you know, because you only two marks for those questions. Um, examples two and three, the change of policy, do take that bit longer. Uh, for that reason, are more likely um, in section C. Uh, the only other bit in this chapter is the management of payables, which, as you'll see, is exactly the same logic as simple settlement discounts or receivables, uh, but I explain that and go through it in the next lecture.